Now, I used to have a mentality that I didn't care if you love me or not. Just do what you're going to do what I need you to do. That was my mentality because, you know, you know, Negroes, we have a different, you know, <laughs> we are, we, you know, we, we kind of hardcore. So you got, you know, no matter how you get it out of us, we just get it from you. Say amen. But as I grew older, I began to realize that gifts without love don't mean any, don't mean as much. Say amen. It's one thing for somebody to, to give to you because they love you. It's another thing for somebody to give to you because they, they need something out of you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Better yet, it's one thing for somebody to give to you because they celebrate you. It's another thing that they gave to you because they tolerate you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't want people tolerating me. I don't, I'm not going to tolerate people. I'm going to either celebrate you or I'm going to send you. Say man, Celebrate you or send you. But I don't want to tolerate you because tolerating means I really don't prefer you. I just have to put up with you. Say amen. Our marriages would be better if we stopped tolerating. Say amen. And started to celebrate. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When I'm in toleration mode, that means I'm overlooking a whole lot to be with you instead of confronting what I need to lead us to celebration. Say amen. So as you get older, uh, that's, that's the reason why your mother, as she gets older, uh, those little things that you do mean more like if you called her. And you'd be like, Mom, I ain't doing nothing. I'm going to call you. No, thank you. Because I... I just, I just appreciate because as people get older, you begin to find out how many people you, you, you invested in and how many people you wasted your time with. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because those investments will come back. Now, why, now if you are growing old alone, you didn't make enough investments. See, many of us live selfishly, and the selfishness makes people feel like, I don't owe you nothing, so I don't got to come around you. You hearing what I'm saying? But I want to live an invested life. And even as a pastor, do you think I'm just giving to you because I enjoy it? I'm making investments. This is an investment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You make investments in me, not just because you want me to be happy. You make it, it's an investment. <laughs> Say amen. I'm sowing into you because it's an investment. You hear what I'm saying? I don't mind that as long as we don't use each other. Now, usury is when I'm wanting more out of you than what I'm willing to invest. Are uh, y'all there or not there? So I must invest on the level of my expectation to receive. If I invest more than I can receive from you, somebody uses somebody. Now, we're going to fall out over that. Say amen. Are y'all there? And say only love will do. Amen. Are y'all there? When you're young, you don't think that way. You just think, you just glad people won't be your friend. You don't know why people won't be your friend. You don't know. Some of y'all young cats, y'all are so slow. Y'all ain't figured out when. Y'all don't care who people are that come. As long as they like me, I'm, I just want to be liked. Say amen. As you get older, you realize liking is overrated. What about just to like me? Say amen. Just to be around me because they like me. I want them to love me. I want them to love means I can't do. I may not be able to do everything for you. I may not be able to please you the way you think you're supposed to be pleased, but you with me based on a commitment to see me do good, say amen, versus I'm only with you because I want something from you. Because the minute you get something from me, you're gone. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And many of us have people who we have sown and we have invested in and they have not appreciated what we have invested you will grow into resentment if you don't understand this message. You will live a life of resenting people instead of loving and celebrating people. Say amen. All right, look at, verse, look at John chapter 6, and we're going to look at verse 2. When you get there, say amen. It says, and a great multitude followed him, talking about followed Jesus, 
because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. A great multitude followed Jesus because they saw the miracles which he did on them that were diseased. It's difficult to, it's difficult when you are effective to really know why people come in your life. When you're gifted, when you're talented, when you have ability, it's always, if you don't believe me, ask a celebrity. They become so paranoid because they get so used by so many people who said, I just want to be around you. I just love you so much. Till they get you in a corner and you give them some money or something. Say amen. Are y'all there? And so this is, a, this is very important for you to understand because the Bible says the people were following Jesus. They didn't love him. They only was following because they saw the miracles. Now that's good because their miracles hooked them. God is a great fisherman. He uses things to hook us. He knows we would have never come to him if it wasn't some selfish motive of our own. You didn't come to God because you love God. You came to God because you was in trouble and you needed God to do something. Amen. Say amen. And you went and heard somebody say, well, if you tried Jesus, you know, he'd make everything all right. Say amen. amen. So you came and tried a God you didn't love, you didn't know. Say amen. amen. Now, this is the difference between the love of man and the love of God because God know we didn't love us because the Bible says that not that you first loved me, but I first loved you. Before you could ever give me love, I had already given you love because I know you're too selfish to give something before you get something. I'm the only one saying, God, that's going to give something before I can get something. I'm going to make an investment before I get you. Before I get what I want, I'm going to invest in it. I'm an investor. Uh, I'm an investing God. Are y'all there? Now, look at verse 3. And Jesus went up into the mountains where he sat with his disciples. Now, there's something that we find throughout Scripture where Jesus was always still in a way. He had to get away from people. And I, I didn't understand it when I was younger. I thought, you know, why is he... Don't you want to be around the people? Don't you want to preach and miracles and see signs and wonders? But I realized that there's a place you have to come to that you got to get away sometime because most of the people that came around him didn't want him. Amen. Say amen. amen. And people will worry you out if they're not around you for you. See, when I'm around you for you, I see the weaknesses. And I'm here, and I realize I wasn't here just to receive from you, but maybe you need something to drink. I don't take you for granted because I recognize we have a friendship, a relationship. There's a reciprocal thing going on here where I'm not just looking for a one-way ticket. Well, because he had the majority of the people around him only wanted something, he had to get away from them. Why did he have to get away from them? Because... When you start seeing the selfish motives of people too much and you ain't had time to get with the Father to get your spirit right, you will start resenting folk. And there was a few times Jesus was upset at people when he saw how their motives were only for selfish gain. Amen? Can we keep going? Now I said he went up in the mountain. Look, look, at, look at verse 4. And the Passover, a, a feast of the Jews was near. Verse 5, when Jesus then lifted up his eyes, he saw a great company come unto him, and he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And the man that went into a mountain, he was going on about his business, but here come all these people. Amen. Now, are y'all there? We're at John 6, right? Now, now, it said, where are we going to get all this bread to feed all these people who have come because of this teaching and the miracles that you have done? Are y'all there? And this, now, um, now, Jesus asked Philip, uh, uh, now, where are we going to buy bread that they may eat? Now, verse 6 says, this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. In other words, he knew that the disciples wasn't going to want to feed them people with their own money. 
because he understood even you cats this close to me. Y'all only following me for what y'all see y'all going to get. And if you don't believe me, you remember that uh, two of the disciples went and got their mama. And went and asked, they, they mama went to ask Jesus, well, Lord, uh, you know, I'm worshiping you, but uh, when you come into your kingdom, can one, one of my sons sit on your right hand and one of my sons sit on your left hand? He said, oh, okay, so that's what your sons are following me for. He said, well, they can sit where they want to if they can drink the cup I'm going to drink. Can they go through what I'm going to go through? Yeah. You can sit with me if you go through something. Say amen. Are y'all there? Now, now. Now Philip answered and said, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. So man, we ain't got enough bread to give them bread. Are y'all there? Then one of his disciples, uh, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, there is a little lad here which have five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? Now, you know, instead of them understanding that they could have bought it, they go, now we're going to take this little boy's lunch. You know, this little boy over here was smart enough that if I'm going to follow you out of the city in the wilderness, I'm going to take me something to eat. <laughs> Are y'all there? And Jesus said, make the men sit down. So now Jesus get ready to go into his Superman mode. This is all we know about Jesus is his Superman side. Most people only know your Superman side. The Clark Kent side, they don't know that side. They wouldn't even recognize you when you were Clark Kent. If they saw you face to face, don't you remember in Superman how you screaming at TV, Lois, Clark Kent, and Superman. Just look the curl the other way. Just curl at that way. It makes you so mad that, like, they was oblivious that Superman was the same guy. But she couldn't. There's something different about you, Clark. He looked the same. There was no mask. There was nothing. You know, at least Batman had a mask. I mean, they didn't have nothing. His plain face with some glasses, and he looked different. The man she'd been kissing on. But even though that's an obvious uh, observation, that's not as true when it comes to the, the, uh, real people. That people cannot see the other side of you. Are you there? As a matter of fact, I've learned people tend to get offended when you show them Clark Kent. Because we used to the super side. The side that when I need you goes in operation. The side that when I call you, you always pray. You always going to let me buy this. You always got it. Say amen. But when you go into the Clark Kent side, which is the side without the super, then people say you out of character. Not knowing my character really wasn't Superman. Amen. That's the character. That's God's character. My character is Clark Kent. Say amen. And so if you have people in your life that have fallen in love with your super, they'll all, oh, y'all gonna really fall out later when they realize you was really this fumbling, clumsy, no confidence. That's the real you. Are you there? This is the reason why the Bible says God, man looks on the outside. God will look at the heart. See, people can only see what they want to see based on the outward appearance. But God looks deeper. That's why he told us, don't know each other by the flesh. No one know by the spirit. So when I come in your life and I look beyond your flesh and I look at your spirit, I realize that the spirit of you is the real you. So I know if you can sustain this relationship or not. That's a whole nother message. Are y'all there? Come on, y'all there? Many of you all know you have stories in your mind where you... You fooled somebody and made them think you were Superman, a Supergirl, Batwoman or something. Say amen. Wonder Woman, that's a better one. Superheroes, since they come back with all these superheroes. And you knew how hard it was to keep up that appearance. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But you allowed a person to believe that you really look like that all the time.
See, he didn't know about tracks. He didn't know nothing about extensions, and he ain't know nothing about that. He thought that's to all you. He only saw the super side. He thought those were your nails. He didn't know about the other side. Say amen. You thought he had some money. You thought the car was his. You had no idea that you was watching the super side. Say amen. We need people at times to be super because don't nobody want to be with a dud. Say amen. But you cannot expect a person to have that level all the time. So why we don't like each other no more? Because I found out you are normal. Why well, I wasn't with you because you was normal. I was with you because the way you make me feel. So the way you make me feel, I, I, I went home talking about you just super. Now realizing super is a temporary thrust of energy. That's limited. Y'all ain't hearing me. This is limited energy. Even Jesus had limited energy. That's why he had to go back up on the mountain and recharge and he came down super again. You remember when he took Peter and James and John when he went to the Mount Transfiguration to pray and all of a sudden he was up there crying? Why? Because he realized, man, I got to go to the cross and all of a sudden the Clark Kent the Clark Kent came out. The Clark Kent that feels. The Clark Kent that hurts. The Clark Kent that cries. The Clark Kent that fears. Y'all yes, yes, hearing what I'm saying? And while he was being Clark Kent, Peter and them was asleep. Are y'all there? I'm trying to help y'all with this. Because it's going to help you know how to be and help you, you to know how to honor and respect people because everybody has a double dichotomy, has a dichotomy. In other words, there's always two sides to a person. Say amen. See, people get, see, people get shocked. That's why pastors don't let you run with them. It ain't that pastor's sin. They just know you can't handle me eating. You take somebody out to eat as a pastor, and they will look at you like, Pastor, eating that? I ain't no eat that. You see your pastor eat see, see him eat that? You take them out to eat, and because you don't tell, talk, and if you say something to you, if you don't say, oh, baby, sweet, you know, talk to your wife. Oh, baby, come on, sweet baby. Thank you, baby, for everything you do. They think something, what's wrong with your marriage? Why? Because all they see is the super suit. When you up there preaching and casting out devils, and they don't know nothing about you, you man. They don't know you real. You have a, a life. You hurt. You cry. You go through things. You don't always have answers. If Jesus always was super, he never would have said, I'm only telling you what my father's telling me. I'm getting the answer from somewhere. So I'm not trying to lead you to me. I'm trying to lead you to him so that I don't have to always be super. Too much? Now some of y'all suffering today. Because you made people believe you really do like cleaning like that. You really do like. You really love their kids. You made them believe. Oh, I just love them. I'll take them wherever you want to. If they took you up on, are you super today? <laughs> Say amen. Come on, this is an important principle. Say only love will do. As you get older, that's where you get at. Even with your children, you stop accepting the little $2 stuff they do. Amen. Say, man, yeah, yeah, a card you made when you was five is nice. Amen. 
but I've been super much more to you. If anybody know how super I am, it's you. So you need to do more. Why? Because only love will do. I want to know that my labors. See, as you get older, you ain't like it when you're young because you're Superman. But as you get older, you start realizing my strength is limited, my health is limited, my time is limited. You start wanting to know, did I make an impact? Did I really help somebody? Was my life in vain? And so you start looking for those who understand that I'm get, you know, I'm gonna have to pass the suit on after a while. So I want somebody to see beyond the super and see the me. That's why I try to tell y'all, if you're going to get married, quit fronting. Be you. Be the real you. So they don't fall in love with that fake person that does everything. Then they marry, you don't even wash yourself. But they came around you and you smell like roses every day. Then you get married and you, they find out you don't even know hygiene. At least if you would act like that before you got married, they would have had to decide. <laughs> Is, do I like it? They would have no excuse. Because you could always say, you knew before you met me. But when you hide and you always super, then people believe it, and they fall in love with Superman. What was wrong with the relationship with Superman and Lois? She didn't love Clark. Think about that. She worked with Clark. Clark and Clark was close. They were friends. Cared about Clark, but she didn't love Clark. Why? Because Clark wasn't super. Now, what was Clark trying to do? Get her to love him without Superman. And every time he tried to get her to love him, she always was like, but Superman, how can you compare? Talk to me. Let's keep going. Let me go in the word. I'm almost done. Look at this. And it says, uh, and Jesus said, you know, make people sit down. I'm going to go into my Superman. So the men sat down and numbered about 5,000. So 5,000 people, not counting women and children. So I don't know how many people that was. It was more than 5,000. Jesus took the loaves when he had given thanks. When Jesus took the loaves and went into his force and his power. Say amen. That's all they saw. All the disciples saw. All the people saw. You remember when Jesus went to the wedding, when he first did, first did a miracle, his mama knew he was Superman. And she said, Jesus, we out of wine. He said, this ain't even my mission. This ain't my mission to get people drunk. But because we got relationship, you my mama, he went into a Superman, changed water into wine. That was a good miracle. Are y'all there? But the problem is, people thought that he was, he was not man too. He was all God, and he was all man. People only saw the God. They couldn't see the man. When they saw the man, the disciples left him while he was on the cross, because they finally saw the man. All the time they walked with him, all they saw was super. When he let them take him and beat him and whoop him and put him on the cross, they finally saw the man. Let me, let me, let me, let me go. Look at this. Now, it says uh, he gave thanks. He distributed to disciples. Disciples uh, just gave it to them that were set down. And likewise, other fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them, and they filled 12 baskets with fragments of five of the five loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Bonafide, knockout, miracle. 
Nobody could deny this is a bona fide miracle. Say amen. Even the disciples said, my God, didn't he do a miracle? This is who we running with. This is my dude. As long as we with my dude, we ain't got no problems. Because he's super. Say amen. Look at this. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, they said, this is the truth that a prophet should come into the world. Say amen. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force. Take him by force to make him a king. He departed. Now the Bible says because of the miracle he did. They said well we want him to be our king now. Even if he don't want to. Why? Why? But it ain't because we love him. It ain't because we appreciate what he did. It's because we want to make sure we can get it again. So if we, if we hold on to him, then whenever we're hungry, we ain't got a fish. Whenever we need something to eat, he's there. And Jesus knew, I'm going to have to get away from y'all because you're going to soon be disappointed. Why? Because I'm not going to always be super. As a matter of fact, there's some lessons in you learning to fish. Is this too much? Now, are y'all there? Now, this is the reason why I told you as you get older, your mentality changes a little bit. And you begin to say, I wonder, do they love me for real? I wonder, have I been wasting my time with them? Because you begin to realize that most people won't let you be normal. As long as you pay the bills, they love you. Do you know why that's true? Do you know how you know where they love really is? They love is in the security you provide. Want me to tell you why? When the bills look like they ain't going to get paid, look how they treat you. Look how crazy they talk to you. But when the bill is paid and they're secure, they don't love you. They love what you do. They love your security. Say amen. Men fall into that dichotomy wondering, do this woman love me or do she only love what I do? Say Amen. Because as long as the bills are due, we cool. But then when the, when the bills, are, when, when she gets afraid about something, now she talks crazy to me. Where's the respect now? Say amen. The woman says, well, as long as I'm sexing him and say amen, then maybe he loved me because say amen but never really know because people only wanted me for what I can do. That's a bad place to be in. It's to only be wanted because of your performance. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Jesus had to get away from people because he wanted them to know you're not going to make me performance oriented. I'm not a seal. I ain't going to do no tricks and jump through your hoops to get your approval and your love. Say amen. Are y'all there? You have to be careful when you have ability. Ability attracts those with lesser ability. <laughs> People tend to hitch their wagon to success. See, I know as a pastor, people have hitched their wagon to me. You say, well, what's wrong with that? Well, they supposed to hitch it to God. 
but they'll hitch their wagon to you because they perceive I can get where I'm trying to go as long as I'm connected with you. Say amen. It ain't that they love me. They just love the way I'm going. You say, well, what's wrong with that? Well, when I turn around and I no longer can take them where they want to go and I need them, well, we wasn't following you because we wanted you. See, whatever reason a person comes into your life for, once the reason is fulfilled, they no longer want you. That's what I mean. I want people in my life to love me for me. You want people in your life to love you for you. Say amen. Are y'all there? When you love a person for who they are, you're wise enough to know they're super and they're natural. They're going to be good sometimes. They're going to be bad sometimes. Love makes allowances for you to be you. Now, y'all ain't ready for me. When I love you, I allow you to let me down. You ain't catching it. See, when I really love you, I allow you to disappoint me. Because I understand you're not perfect. You're not meant to give me everything in life. So I know that I'll be disappointed and I allow you to do that so you can continue to be you. Because the minute you think you can't disappoint me, you'll cease to be you and you'll try to be what I want you to be. Then you're going to start resenting me because you can't be you. So if you come around, I'm just using me as a scenario. If you come around me, Please find out who I am. Because I'm going to be me. And when you find that the me that I am is not going to jump through and please you, then you may fall out with me. But at least I was me up front. Say amen. Are you there? You know, now that my children are, are well, some of two of them are grown, just about, well, she's grown. You know, she, she's doing things now that when she was a little younger, I thought she wouldn't, I really thought she wasn't going to catch it. And my wife would think it like, is this girl going to ever catch what's going on here? Is she going to ever appreciate what she, she don't know what we've done yet. She's too young to see See, all she know is things were so there that you didn't have to worry about it. You know how you know the roof is over your head. You know that. You don't have to worry about it. Say man. Well, now, she, when it comes to different days or holidays or birthdays or appreciation times, she goes and she gives us things like, not like she's our daughter. She learned that just because I'm your daughter and you wouldn't even care if I gave you something or not, I want to show you that I know it cost you to remain super so that I could have a correct image, an example of what good was. So I'm going to bless you Based on your investment. And if you can ever find somebody that will bless you based on what you sold in them. Oh, you got a good, good, good confidant. Because those are the people that have the spirit of Ruth. Say amen. You know you got Oprah cats. Oprah was around Naomi because she wanted another man to marry another son. 
But when and Naomi had no more sons, she said, well, baby, God's calling me back to my own place. I got to go home now, uh, Naomi. I'll see you. But Ruth said, I'm going to follow you. Naomi said, look, girl, I ain't got no more kids for you to marry. She said, I'm not following you because of what you got. I know what you already invested in, man. And if I follow you, then where you go, the blessing will go. Yo, God. See, I'm, in, I'm, I'm into you. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Yo, God will be my God. Yo, people will be my people. I don't want what you got. I'm into you. And you can't find very many people that have that mentality that I'm looking beyond what I can get from you. Naomi said, man, look, Call me Myra. My name's Bitter. Now, this girl followed her when she had nothing. Nothing else to give. Husband dead. Sons are dead. A bitter widow that couldn't even feed herself. But she said, I'll be a son to you. Why? Because you invested in me. That's the reason why you expect from your children. It's because of your investments. Amen. Say amen. amen. A person ain't worth a dime that won't reciprocate once they have received. You ain't worth a dollar if you see people labor over you and so into you and you have a mentality that you owe nobody nothing. But that is the exact mentality of this selfish generation that will receive from people and act like I don't owe you nothing. And if you ask for something, I'm offended. How dare you expect me to sow back into you? Say amen. So now, when people do things for me, I used to just accept everything, but now I question things. If you don't know me and you start sowing into me real well, I know your motive wrong off the top. You don't know me. I haven't had time to invest. I'm not saying don't sow because you don't know me. <laughs> if God tell you bless me, bless me. Because I don't know you and I'm blessing you. But I'm saying if a person just go over, if people don't know you and they just go overboard when they first meet you, honey, it's something they want. They after something. Say amen. But after you've got a chance to know me, what you do for me then means more to me. Because to know me is to have accepted me. To accept me is to be connected with me. So you're not blessing me for what I could give you because you know me now. This is the only way you will get people to do things for you out of love. How do I get people to do things for me out of love? You may ask that question. I'll give you my answer because it's not a secret. You ready? It's a simple thing that I do. Not a secret. Y'all ready? The way I get people to do things for me out of love is I expect it. It's just an expectation. I expect it. I don't accept nothing less. I just won't. When they try to give me something less, I'm going to say, no, that's not what I accept. Well, you ought to accept what I'm giving. No, I gave you my best. So... You give me your best. Now, when you want to type people that want to be loved, people going to use you. Because you ain't going to expect what you're sowing. You ain't going to expect nothing. I'm just doing it. I never. Oh, you know, people say, I'm just doing it out of the kindness of my own. Okay, people say, oh, for real? Well, I'm going to let you be as kind as you want to be. And even when you say it, you're lying. 
You ain't doing that kind of your heart. You expect something. Say amen. amen. Don't lie. Tell people I expect something. I'm investing in you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are y'all there? Let me get done. Last part and I'm done. Can y'all handle this? Now listen, this, now the people done tried to force him. Look at verse, uh, verse 6, 15. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and force, to force him, take him by force to be king, uh, to make him a king, he departed again into the mountain himself alone. I told you. He said, I got to go away from these people because they do not see me for who I really am. And if I stay around people who don't see me for who I am, they're going to make me be what they want me to be. See, they was going to force, make him be what they wanted him to be instead of respecting and accepting that what he gave them was what he came to give. When you operate like that, you stop using people. You let people come and you let people go. Because you recognize that whatever you have given me or done for me, I accepted it because you gave it. Not because I forced you to give me anything. Whatever I done for you, I gave it because I wanted to give it. Not because you manipulated me. Now we can have that relationship for years as long as we don't cross boundaries trying to manipulate each other. But the minute I start forcing you to do for me, I, I stop loving you. Come on. The minute there's force, I stop loving you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the way that you get people to say only love would do is you let them be themselves. Say man. See, people get mad at me because I let them be themselves. I let them hang themselves. I let them say what they're going to say. I don't force people to do things. I have expectations, and if a person don't want to do it, okay. All right. But don't expect investments. <laughs> See, you let people be who they, and this is a, I know it sounds simple, very important principle. Most people ain't got it yet because they sitting there big, forcing people to be something to them that the person don't even want to be. I don't want to be on a relationship you know, that, that they don't want me in. I don't want nobody in my church don't want to be here. I'd rather for you to find somewhere you can love and respect the person that's over you. Say amen. I know it sounds funny because we reject it and we don't never want to lose nobody. But I found I'd rather let a person go than to hold on to you to try to make you honor me. Say amen. You and your wife and your, you and your spouse should have that mentality. See, you taking the word whooping over the head. You're going to submit to me with whooping. She's whooping you. You're going to love me like Christ loved the church. You're going to love me. Say amen. Whooping each other. Say amen. Why y'all doing that to one another? Because you ain't accepted. This is it. This is who she is. This is who he is. Say amen. This is just who they are. <laughs> you ain't going to love me by me making you love me. You're going to love me when you realize your foolishness ain't really going to bother me. Amen. Say amen. amen. That's the only time you're going to truly love me is when you realize that I'm not going to allow you to pull me down to the levels you like to be on. Come on. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Last point, I'm done. There are, there are times in your life where people just won't respect you or honor you properly I wish everybody would but they won't at that point in your life you have to say I'd rather let them go now not if you're married <laughs> guys fix it up boy you know but 
Oh, married people. Oh, oh, okay. No, not if you're married. If you marry, you can't say that. But if you're not, if you, you know, if I'm talking about, you know, certain relationships, then you're going to have, even your children, you'll have to do that way. Amen. You'll find that sometime a child will be rebellious and they won't do what you tell them and they won't respect you. Wow. There's a point where you have to decide. Am I going to let you drag me through this or am I going to let you go and find out life on your own? Or am I going to let you take me through all these chains and have me putting up with your foolishness? See, you have to let people go. There's a principle of release that you have to have. It's a law that there are certain times you got to let people go. Me and my wife, we first started out, first started out as, 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 a, as a married couple. We had to let people go. People got angry at us, still don't like us because we decided we're, we're going to live the way we're going to live. We're going to live the way we're going to live because now that they kids are grown, they kids are repeating the curses that we had was doing when we was in the world. So we figured, now we're going to try to raise ours right so they'll have some sense, have a spiritual heritage. Say amen. Well, for years we tried to, well, we sorry. We, you know, we, we here, we're going to try to, you know, uh, uh, we pray for y'all. We, you know, we, we're going to try to, you know, uh, we kept trying until it just got to the point to where it was like, you know what? You Negroes just want to be honry. So you can be honry without us. Guess what happened when we let, pe let, let people go? Well, what? Y'all don't come around no more. Then when you be coming around, y'all sitting there trying to act like y'all know we ain't Christians. Say amen. But when we let them go, then they got, now the attitude, when we watch y'all, well, you know, y'all think y'all too good. See, I, now what did I learn? You couldn't win with them. No, no, it's, it, it, they have demonic hate. You can't win with them people. They've decided, I ain't going to honor you no matter what you do. You know when they're going to honor you? When they realize that you did it, you, you, you left them alone. Say amen. And God is being God in your life. That's when they're going to honor you. Say amen. Amen. Stand on your feet.